So among the great working directors, a director I really want to praise is Lynn Ramsey, the Scottish-born director who has made four feature films, that all of which I really like and recommend for anybody who likes this channel. So this video, I'm going to introduce her to you. You may have seen one or two of her movies and talk about some of the things I like about her work to try to get you into trying to watch one or two or maybe all of her films. And by the way, I know that she's made more than just four feature films, some short films, documentaries. Those are less accessible, less easily found by normal people like me and you on online for streaming. So you can definitely find her four feature films somewhere. What I think is partly great about Ramsey is she's bringing together, you know, the two big strands of cinema that actually people like only one, some people like only one strand, some people, most people like the other. And those are the story-based cinema, is or movies about stories. But there's also the sight and sound, the artistic aesthetic aspect of movies. Movies are just a, a form of art. There's a particular media of art. They don't have to involve stories. Stories can be tangential. And you know, a lot of the cinema, the classic cinema, the sort of high art cinema, of some great directors who are not beloved by popular people, by critics and film historians, they are, tend to be sight and sound directors like Michelangelo Antonioni, somebody I'm not going to recommend to a lot of people I know, and somebody who I think my college students, most of them wouldn't like initially, you know, if they were to watch Antonio on their own. But Ramsey's clearly influenced by Antonioni, by Bergman, I think by, by Malik and a bunch of other directors in that vein. And yet, you know when you're gonna get a Ramsey film, she's gonna give you plot. And so you have to wait for it, sometimes for 20, 30 minutes, but there will be plot developments. And so she's bringing together just wondrous aesthetics, great shot making, great sound, great sound effects. And then there's a sort of aesthetic experience, experience with her work, but then there's also the enjoyment of the plot developments. And I strongly recommend going into a Ramsey work not knowing what's going to happen. I think that's a great way to experience it. Don't read plot summaries. Let the thing unfold on you and be surprised by it. Because I think that is, to me, that's the way I watch them, the best way to watch these movies. Otherwise, maybe a plot summary spoils too much or maybe uh, ruins or deadens some of the experience of the initial watching of her movies. I said Ramsey really loves forms. Aesthetics are really important. Her shot making. She loves particular details. And I think in the first 20 to 30, maybe 40 minutes of her movies, she likes to create a pattern of images, a pattern of images and sound and associations with them and sort of not have any plot just yet. Because plots usually develop an hour into the movie, sometimes something important or, or terrible. Usually she likes to focus on something bloody or tragic first, and that will happen at the beginning. But then there's a pattern of associations, sort of slow moving for a while. As with the opening shot of You Were Never Really There, a movie about a vigilante who has trauma and is trying to save children from a, a child sex trafficking ring. The movie opens with a wonderful shot of a dust in the air particles, these little fragments of things floating around. And I think she depends on viewers. She really believes and trusts in viewers to put things together. She thinks viewers are smart or smart enough to get her work. And so you are to put these little particles, these little fragments together. And I'm telling you, each image as it comes along is a fragment or particle that will be sort of united one by the plot or story, but two by you. And so I think you, there's some work that has to be done in her movies, which is good for us. And that is partly why some of her movies aren't liked or beloved or reviewed negatively by on popular review sites such as Amazon. But still, I really like her, her style because she trusts viewers to put things together and yet she still does deliver a, an engaging plot or plot intrigue. Another thing I really like Ramsey and this isn't a virtue, it's just an observation, is that she focuses on character types who are unusual for films, not typical choices. So in her first feature, Ratcatcher, you have a, a young Scottish boy in a city, Glasgow, who is in a nuclear family. And he's a, he's a little rat in the, in the city, as it were. Sort of an updated Charles Dickens story. This movie's like if Terrence Malick was trying to film a Ken Loach movie. <laughs> and the results of that, like some weird blend of imaginative aesthetic filmmaking with sort of hard realism in a story that could exist. This almost could be a documentary in a lot of places. But her focus on this poor down and out family in Glasgow, uh, first world poverty, as it were. 
as very interesting as a story. And then the dreams and the wonders of these people maybe to escape. It's a very typical story. I mentioned Ken Loach, Kess, the famous, uh, you know, realistic story by him. This movie has rats in it, though. It's sort of somewhat of an inverse. But it's really lovely, very haunting story. And one, another image that comes up in all of Ramsey's movies is characters submerged in water, submerged underwater. Maybe a kind of baptism, maybe a kind of deluge, maybe drowning, maybe suicide, maybe murder. Um, and, and the image that comes from, she likes to quote it, I think, from Night of the Hunter, a beautiful haunting image of a woman underwater who's been killed by a psychopathic killer, comes up in a lot of her movies. Be on the lookout for that. So yeah, Ramsey focuses on how childhood forms us, raising children, and uh, great problems with that. I love that she features children in her movies. We're in a sort of movie time where, you know, for one thing, practical purposes, it's hard to get a child in a movie because of child acting, and the, most children are not great actors, so sometimes the performances don't work out. But children are obviously a massive part of society, of civilization. It's very realistic to have children involved in a person's world, and so... She does involve children a lot, which I really appreciate. Everybody is traumatized. Everybody's an artist creator. That comes up in her movies. And pop music, American music in particular, as a formative experience, but also as a jarring sign of individualism run amok in the modern world, or the you know, the loss of personhood or the otherness. And this pop songs, this wonderful use of of not just the songs, but the lyrics in the songs really comes alive in all of her movies. As far as directing goes, if you guys like Christopher Nolan, Denis Villeneuve, like in Arrival, for instance, watch We T We Need to Talk About Kevin because I there's very few movies that mix up a timeline and a chronology and have the plot is so different from the narrative. The plot being like the chronological order of events in a movie versus the narrative, which is the literal ordering of events that movie is Nolan on steroids, just sort of a masterclass in how to mix up timelines, time frames. We need to talk about Kevin. Check that one out. As far as Ramsey works, I would recommend starting with You Were Never Really Here is probably good if you like Joaquin Phoenix or and, and or Vigilante movies. I think that that's a good one. I love the, the suggestion of a wider world. It this involves political conspiracies to some extent. But the other movie you might start with is Ratcatcher if you like Ken Loach. Uh, that's in the Criterion Collection. It's pretty easily found. But I, I really like Morvern Caller a lot. So that, for those who like Antonioni, you might check that one out too. And as of this video's making, Lynn Ramsey is only 53 years old. So hopefully she makes more movies. God bless her <laughs> to, to make more of the stuff she wants. You read her Wikipedia page and it says she might make a Moby Dick in space movie. What? I can't even imagine her doing that. But that would be great if she could. Anything that she does, though, is probably worth watching. Particular point of view, great artistry all around. I love Lynn Ramsey. Let me know what you think about her and her movies in the comments and which ones you would recommend. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.